Today, everyone is talking about access networks and the technology. So what are these access networks and why do we need them? An access network is a network that connects the subscribers to the immediate internet service provider. And the reason why we need, we need them is if a person wants to transfer some information to a place far apart, it is physically impossible to transmit such type of data and highly impractical. And such type of tasks require a lot of time span. Various types of access network include dial-up, DSL, Wi-Fi, WiMAX and there are many more. In a dial-up connection, a person sitting at the home can easily get the internet facility by simply subscribing to the image service provider. What you needed was a telephone connection, a modem, externally or internally connected to your CPU. The modem needed to be configured using a firmware or a driver. And so, a dedicated path was established between the user and the ISP for 24-7. When some data needed to be sent, it was converted into the bit format, sent to the wires, and then again translated by the modem into the original format. Finally, the user got the data. But the rising temperature of the modem or the prolonged inactivity from the user's end can easily lead to the disconnection of such type of connection. And there's a chance that the link can easily get disconnected, like you can see the connection is getting disconnected over here. The speed varies from 40 to 50 kilobits per second, but it can go at max to 56 kilobits per second. The point-to-point -point protocol with providing a secure data transmission is used in the dial-up connections, but there's a great chance that a heavy uploading and downloading of multimedia files can make the dial-up connection get disturbed and the user eventually gets carried away like you can easily see over here. Better technology DSL came up which used the same medium, but the essential component was an externally connected transceiver, commonly known as a DSL modem. And both the internet and the telephone could work simultaneously using a splitter. A connection was established with the ISP using a splitter. The telephone network and the modem both used different frequencies. So this was done using frequency division multiplexing. High frequency was reserved for the modem and the lower for the telephone network. The lower frequency range for the telephone network generally varies from 0 to 4 kHz per second and for the upstreaming and the downstreaming of the data through the internet DSL, frequency ranges from 25 kHz to 1100 kHz. An RJ45 connector is used for interfacing with Ethernet and IC card and the protocol used is point to point over Ethernet protocol. Such type of access network is most widely used nowadays, but it is unavailable in the rural areas. But the wired medium has different issues of portability and it is also not very flexible. So we always prefer to a wireless medium which is better. Moving to another X type of access network, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi or wireless fidelity is an internet access to wireless LAN. It has wide range of applications due to its portability. Using one medium, internet access is given to a number of users simultaneously. You can use it while sitting at your home, your office, in school or even in your lawn. To establish a connection through Wi-Fi, you need to have a wireless LAN card installed in your computer. A modem has a wired connection with the ISP. Computer's wireless adapter translates data into radio signals and then transmits them through antenna. A wireless router receives and decodes data and sends to internet through wired Ethernet. A router consists of firewall, Ethernet hub, and an access point. So, in this way, the data through Wi-Fi is sent. The coding technique of orthogonal frequency domain multiplexing is used, in which data is split before transmitting, which reduces simple signal interfacing. Security issues are of prior importance. Encryption methods of WEP and WPA are used. The protocol used is of media access control, which allows access based on MAC addresses. Wi Fi Alliance is a trade association that provides wireless LAN and certifies products if they conform to certain standards of interoperability. According to IEEE 802.11 standard, Wi-Fi operates on a frequency range of 2.4 to 5 GHz. 
and a single modem can serve multiple nodes. Although Wi-Fi can serve multiple nodes at a time, but it has always problems of wired media. The wired medium needs frequent repairing which causes a lot of trouble. Another issue is that of coverage. Another issue is that of coverage. Wi-Fi provides limited coverage and it is always confined to a limited number of nodes. So there's another type of access network, WiMAX. In a WiMAX access network, all the mediums are wirelessly connected. There's a wireless tower and a wireless receiver. Data is converted to radio signals using 802.16 standard. Data is sent and received through the tower and the receiver. WiMAX technology runs on connections based on MAC addresses. There are two ways how WiMAX works, line of sight and non-line of sight. In line of sight service, there is a fixed dish antenna pointing straight at the WiMAX tower from a rooftop or a pole. It is stronger and stable and uses a frequency range of 66 GHz. On the other hand, small antenna on your computer and connects to the tower but uses a lower frequency range. WiMAX has a wide range coverage, high speed and has more wireless portability. It has a coverage of 30 miles and has a speed of 70 Mbps. So that was all about the different types of access networks and their technology. Thank you so much.